they go doing me now. I'm still a talk of the town. Running the scissors, I'm poking them down. We turn the spots no frowns. Gang hop out, then we clear them. Hey, what's up, y'all? It's Coley from Talk of the Town, and today we have a special guest from Harlem, Raina Simone. Hey, hey, what's up, everybody? How you doing, Coley? How you feeling? I'm good. I can't complain. It's good energy. It's the summertime. Creative. You know, like, it's dead been a little minute since we had a New Yorker on the couch. Yeah? Yeah. We've been a lot of people from out of town right now. But oh, I got to bring it back then. I got to bring the energy yeah, back. Bring the energy back. Come All right, so now. we're going to do rapid fire questions. I'm going to ask you some questions. Just say the first thing that comes to mind. Oh, boy. All right. Okay. A what word you couldn't spell as a child? Ophthalmologist. I lost a spelling bee because they told me to spell ophthalmologist in, like, fourth grade. Why would I okay. know that? O p h t h a l m o l o g i s t. Now I know it. Oh, she never gonna get it wrong. Now. Never, never, never Period. forget that. All right. Um, <laughs> one song you hate that everybody loves. Um, you know what? I haven't heard or a song that I just favorite. really hate recently. Yeah, least favorite song that everybody loves. That Gangnam Style song from like. Oh, that was a minute ago. Yeah, I was in it like was middle school. It was kind of annoying after a while. <laughs> Not gonna lie. All right. Um, if you could pick any talent in the world to be a pro at, what would it be? Mm. I think master of being a master of all skills. Because they say jack of trades is master of none. But if I could just be a master of all. Is that's, that a cheat answer? That's, that's a cheat answer? All right. All right. Yes. Um, let's see. If I could be the best at something. The best at something. Like pro athlete. I would be the level. best musician ever. Okay. We halfway there. Give me, okay. a, give me a little okay, bit okay, a little okay. more time. So producing music or everything? Everything. All right, go all on. Right, go on. Um, favorite ad lib. Do you use ad libs? I, I do like use Everybody ad-lib. do at some point. A yeah. favorite ad lib of mine or yes. just in general? Um, you know what? I, um, I do this thing that I realized I didn't realize until I started listening to things back. And I really got to feel the beat in the beginning. So I'm always like... <laughs> And I listened, and I was like, oh, my gosh, do I sound like that? But I do do that. So I okay. guess that's my little ad lib. All right. Um, favorite meal to cook? Pasta. Anything pasta. Anything with pasta. But I spice it up, though. It's not just, you know, throw okay, the pasta. Like the... chicken pasta, yeah, spaghetti, you know, like, a little sauce, right. a little cheese. Okay. <laughs> all right. Um, favorite thing about Harlem? Um, the African market on 118th Street. Okay. And the history and culture, of course. Okay, what's the most useless thing you've memorized? Pledge of Allegiance. It is kind of useless, bro, now that I'm thinking about it. You know? <laughs> Shout out to democracy, though. If you had to listen to one artist for the rest of your life, who would you pick? Ooh. It's kind of hard. I it is hard. Ooh, I don't know. Either Cole or Kendrick, I think. Cole or Kendrick? Cole or Kendrick. So you, you team Kendrick. For sure. For sure. <laughs> okay. I couldn't hesitate with that too much. I love Drake to death, actually. But I think when it comes to like bars, bars in this battle, you got to give it to Kendrick. Kendrick? You have to. You have to. Nice. Okay, so um, what's your go-to song when you want to sing R&B? Ooh, Love by Music Soul Child. Mm. I love that song. Okay, okay. Um, and if you could speak in any other accent, what would you pick? Any other accent? I don't know, but I would, I would love to speak some more languages. I feel like I have a whole lot of accents anyway. I code switch a lot. There's a whole lot of accents wrapped up in there. But okay. um, yeah, I would love to speak like Wolof or something that no, not a lot of other people speak. Okay. So who would you talk to? The other people that speak Wolof. <laughs> <laughs> We're just going to have our own nah. little conversation. Being from New York, I'd be wishing I knew how to speak Spanish, though. Like, yeah? I feel like Spanish is very, like, you got... It's, it's like ideal to know somebody who speaks Spanish. No, I agree. I speak Spanish, but I don't want to get a stripper. It's real bad. She's shitting on me right now. I don't want to get a All right, so Ransom Simone. So for the people that don't know who you are, let them know who you are. My name is Raina Simone. It's a pleasure. Thank you for having me again, Cody. Mm-hmm. I am a, um, an all-round artist. I'm a producer, um, an engineer. I'm a, a rap, of course. And um, I do a little singing too, so I like to I like to and and I play instruments, so I would say all of the above. Oh, what instruments you play? Um, piano or violin are my main, and I play saxophone a little bit, a little bit, but I'm not as good at, at that as I am at piano. Piano is my main main instrument. Nice. Okay, mm-hmm. I know how to play instrument too, but like I feel like the instrument I could play is useless. What instrument? What? That's not useless. I feel like that's fake useless. What? All the cool kids in the band played the clarinet. Nah, I think the cool stuff is the drums and piano for sure. Yeah. Man. 
For sure. See? Uh, See? Maybe I'm biased. I, li- I like the clarinet. Okay. So um, let them know, like, so you do everything. You do producing. You mm-hmm. do songwriting. That's all that cool. type of stuff. All right. So when did you get started into music? You know what? I started very young. I um, gravitated to the piano at a very, very young age. Um, I would kind of just go missing when I was, like, two, three years old, and they would just find me, like, playing by myself on the piano. And um, eventually I took piano very, very seriously, and so I was trained in, in classical and jazz music. Um, in terms of like, you know, music theory and instruments. And then I fell in love with poetry and I realized that that's the way in which I can express myself in a way which I don't feel like I have to code switch or be anybody else or, you know, talk in a certain way. I can just freely say exactly what's on my mind and the way I want to say it. And so Mm -hmm. when I realized you can put poetry with instruments, it was like, oh shoot, I got to be a rapper. Um, And so that's how it really started with with the rap side. Um, And then I started rapping very, very young and I had to have been in like middle school. Of course, I couldn't afford my own beats. So I was begging my parents to buy beats for me, and they were like, "We're not doing anything you can do yourself." Mm. So, um, yeah, then I started producing, producing too, and putting it all together. Okay. Mm-hmm. All right. So, do you, when they was like, "Oh, that they're not gonna um, buy it for you because you could do it yourself," mm-hmm. do you feel like that was like a good lesson, or was you a little salty at the moment? Oh, I was definitely a little salty at the moment <laughs> for sure. I can't sit here and lie to you, Cody. But, um, but of course, I, in retrospect, it was very valuable. Okay. Very valuable lesson. Okay, so how did you learn how to produce? Because you were at what age at this point? You know what? I started producing in, like, eighth grade. Okay. Mm-hmm. But um, I started on the Machina by eighth Native Instruments. Eighth grade was, like, 16, 15, 13? I think I was, yeah, like, 13, 13 14. 14, yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, I started on, on Machina by Native Instruments. So, you know, that's the, the drum pad, mm, um, which okay. is really, like, a sampling machine. So that's where I started. Um, then I also had a Clavinova Yamaha, a Yamaha Clavinova, which, I, um, which is a, a piano, but, like, a workstation piano. Okay. Um, so I started on those two machines. When so I was how did you school. know to get this stuff? Is what I'm saying. School. You know what? No, actually, YouTube? I don't University? even know. I just started doing research. What? And you know what? I was obsessed with Arab music at the time. Okay. If you all are familiar, and Arab uses the MPC 5000. Mm. Um, and so I fell in love with those, you know, those drum machines. But the MPC 5000 was like five thousand oh, dollars. But um, you know, Machina still did it what I needed to do, but reasonably priced, and you know, in a way that I could figure it out more quickly. And so we stuck with Machina. I still use Machina to this day, so yeah, uh-huh. like like ten years later, we still use Machina. Okay, so do you find yourself like producing music for yourself, or do you still go out and look for beats? You know what? I I do produce a lot for myself. That's yeah. always like my my first thing to do, because um, you know I'll start making a beat and I'll just get lyric ideas automatically that I just feel like I have to put down. Mm-hmm. But I will say, recently I, I've I've discovered the power of just collaboration and meshing genius you know you got two geniuses versus one in the same room mm-hmm. that's you, you can't lose so um i love working with you know like-minded producers too okay but i always have to like add a little something of course of course yeah. of course how do you feel about the producing game right now i feel like this year producers have been on the rise yeah yeah i think it's a very okay. healthy state for production but i think i think pr- production's getting lazy a little bit it's a lot easier now when you mm-hmm. have you know a whole bunch of Royalty free oh, like, samples to. Oh, you talking about like when you actually making a beat? I'm talking uh-huh. about like just kind of producers getting their spotlight right now. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I that's definitely I, mean. I definitely see that happening yeah, yeah, more yeah, that's and more, what which I love. Um, I'm not in a booth with them. I don't know what's. <laughs> going on. Said, I don't know what happens over there, but. But on a spotlight tip, I do feel like a lot of producers have been getting flowers lately. No, absolutely. I think I think producers are realizing how lucrative it can be when people know the producer as well. Right. So you know, it started with just the tags and making sure the beats were tagged, so we knew the producers. Mm-hmm. And now I feel like producers are really marketing themselves as right. you know, almost like artists. Mm-hmm. Um, well, yeah, as artists, which producers are. So I definitely think it's a really a really cool time period for production. And um. Okay, so you produce most of your music, but yes. you are into the collabing phase right now. Yes. Um, who's some people you've been collabing with lately? Um, you know what? DJ Chop a lot. Um, from down in the boot from Louisiana, we have a a, a record that we co-produced on on my project coming up. Um, Nicholas Craven, who does a lot with you know the Griselda type sound and Ransom, um, and 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 those kind of that. What what would you call that? Kind of like that classic hip hop. Mm-hmm sultry kind of hip-hop yeah. sound um so he and i have one on my upcoming project um who else hassan sharif a, a, a few different different uh, different okay, dope producers okay so in although um mr sharif though is from is from new york yeah so that's one so some new york and some out of town for yeah sure. you know i um with this project in particular it was really important to me to like reach back to my lineage and i wanted to present mm-hmm. everything that i am so you know there's a whole lot of 
New York artists on there, New York collaborations, but um, mm -hmm. you know, my mother's family's from Milwaukee and Louisiana, my father's from Buffalo, so I had to throw that in there a little bit too with okay. some, some West African influence. Yeah. Um, so yeah, all of those those main five places I have I have collaborations with. I'm about to say, yeah, speaking of Milwaukee, don't you got like JP and them on the song? I do. Yeah, like yeah. They, they buzzing right now. Yeah, shout out to JP and Big Frank and all of them. I love the Milwaukee sound they're doing. It's called Low End, they call it. Okay. But um, yeah, shout out to the 414. Always okay. got my heart. So how do people know to like, okay, I'm going to reach out to Raina for a song versus I'm going to reach out to her for a beat? Like, what's the difference? All of the above just hit me and let's oh, okay. do it. Let's make magic. Come so on now. Open. Yeah, of open course, of course, of course. So you're not solely focused on one thing. You're just open to... Um, you know what? I, I've tried to focus on just production and okay. just artistry at different points in time. And for me, I think they just coincide and they go together. And it's just, you know, art in general. Sometimes yeah. I want to express myself through melodies on a keyboard. And sometimes I want to mm -hmm. express myself through melodies, through my, my words and my vernacular. So Yeah, it's working. Like, you see Cash Cobain. Yeah, it's shout out to Cash Cobain. 100%. So, um, okay, so we got the... You, so did you meet JP or you sent them to beat or how did that, um, how did that happen? So you know what? We we know people in common. Okay. Milwaukee is very small but very big. Okay. So if you know Milwaukee, you got to know somebody that, that, that uh, you can't somebody. not. You can't not. Okay, got it. Um, so I'm very close with um, with um, a few people who are very, very close to him. But um, I'd sent that record to Big Frank initially. Okay. And um, yeah, Big Frank... Big Frank um, or you know what, I think I sent it to, to both of them, but initially I actually did do that one for Big Frank. Okay. And um, JP ended up hopping on that one too, but we actually have a project on, a song on my upcoming project that I'm super excited about too. It's um, myself, JP, and HD for president from oh. uh, Louisiana, and that, that record turned out really, really dope, so okay. excited for that one. Okay, so you have, what's the project name? It's called Old Soul New Conscience. Say that one more time. Old Soul New Conscience. Old Soul New Conscience. You've yes, been promoting indeed. this project for a little minute. I have. What was the whole I absolutely up? have. You know what? I wouldn't say there was a hold up, but I always had more to say. And to me, mm -hmm. you know, that debut first project is really, really important. And so I didn't want to put it out and not have people know the artists that they were listening to. I always said, you know, my first project, I want people to know exactly what artists they're listening to when they listen to the project. Okay. Um, and, you know, a lot of things are happening right, right now in the world between... Kamala Harris's presidency and between various wars going on in different places and just uh, mm. culture and, yeah. you know, there's a lot, a lot going on. And I think those things are very, very powerful. And um, I don't see music as, as a point in time. I see it as forever if it's good music, you know. Mm. So 20 years from now, I want somebody to listen through to this project and know exactly what was going on during this time when I made it. Um, mm. You know, the entirety of the climate and, and what my take on that was. Okay, so do you feel like you're being a little hard on yourself with the project? Oh, I'm always hard on myself. Say, but you know wow. what? <laughs> but at some point, I did just have to say, all right, we're done. Like now, there's no going back. It's a wrap. We're done. It's, it's in. We're good. You've been promoting that project for a minute. Nah, absolutely. And like, you know what, too? I had that name before I even had the music to go with it. So okay. that was something that I always kind of branded, too. Um I've been saying old soul new conscience since, yeah, the, since the moment minute, since yeah. the moment since the moment I've seen, I I was looking back you've been saying it for like about three years now yeah 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 so my my first viral video went viral uh, three years ago and the moment it came out I started saying old soul new conscience because yeah. I felt like that's that's who I am as a person you know so I ended up using the same title for the the album name because I just again I think that fully describes me but um mm -hmm. but yeah I would say I am the old soul new conscience so okay mm -hmm. so track list. How many songs so far? 24. That's another reason it took so long. Okay. Mm -hmm. So you had to pick through all your... Yeah, and I, I really was being a perfectionist with this. So there, there are a lot of... I don't like it. <laughs> yeah, there are a lot of records that didn't make the cut too, but I think what I'm going to do is just do a whole nother project with the outliers and throw that out right, okay. right after. But, okay. um, but I was definitely being very calculated. Mm -hmm. Okay, so as a new, I guess, not I want to say new, but as an upcoming artist, do you feel like projects are important? Or do you, it don't, it don't really seem like you went the single route like most artists do. Mm -hmm. Like, why is that? Yeah, I actually intentionally did the entire opposite, opposite thing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, nah, I think there's a lot of power in the counterculture. And I think people often forget that, you know, at some point things shift and the counterculture begins to be the culture that's dictating where things are going. Um, and I think right now people are very heavily focused on, you know, the single ideology and commercial music. And I think that's great, but I think that only lasts for a while. It's ultimately creating situations where you're like forcing people to be one hit wonders. Mm -hmm. um, and that's never how yeah. I saw myself at all. Okay. So to me, it was really important to present a project where, you know, 
you might only hear one song that you like, sure, but there's a good chance that you might hear 24 that you like, you know, and I think that solidifies an artist in a different way. Um, and then on top of that, too, I think that things have just changed, whereas, you know, attention span has changed, so people might not sit and listen through a whole album anymore. At the end of the day, it's really no different than a playlist, you know? If you, if you are doing marketing every, every song on there individually and people are going to listen to certain songs and then accidentally listening to some more because they're there, I'm not mad at that, you know? Yeah. So I think it's really about how you present it and, and what kind of music you're bringing to the table, too. Um, so, yeah. Okay. Mm-hmm. How would you describe your sound? I would say my sound is honest and soulful. I know you said you like to make your own genres. So do you have a <laughs> name for the genre? Um, you know what? I wouldn't say that anyone has heard the, the genre that I've made yet. Okay. I think that's going to be the second project. Right now i got to do a little little introduction, give you okay. all some sounds you have heard a little bit, and then I'm going to come with that. But, um, but right now I'll just describe my sound as truthful and, and soulful. Okay. When I say sound, so it's like soulful. I think so. Like Lauren Hill vibe. I love Lauren Hill, so that would that would that would that would be a comparison. I'm not mad at. Okay. Mm-hmm. All right. So, but I feel like a lot of your music is also like kind of poetry vibes too. Yeah. Is that on purpose, or do you want to like, you know, like switch it up? Like I don't know. It seems like you'd be having like poems ready. <laughs> like, nah, yeah, I um, I write every day. For me, it's not mm-hmm. really like something where I gotta like go to a writing session or like right. go to an exercise, and that's mm-hmm. how my music comes about. I on on the car ride here, I was getting ideas and just jotting mm-hmm. down in my notes, and okay. you know whatever doesn't make sense with something else that I jotted down in my notes, I'll put it with something else that I jotted down earlier. If the concept mm-hmm. is the same. But um, yeah, I think poetry is the backbone of rap and hip hop music and always has been when it's our narrative. So that's really, really important to me. But I also don't want people to be surprised because um, you know, right now I think, I think there's a lot of music that I have out that is very sociopolitically conscious, yeah. um, which of course is a big part of, of me and my artistry and my persona as well. But you know, don't ever get confused if you hear a little twerking song from Raina Simone, because that's not, oh, you know. Oh, you have one of those. Oh, you thought me and JP were talking about politics? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I was just trying to see the vibes because I know that um, a lot of your music is deep. It's lyrical. Mm-hmm. It's more like, you know, it makes you think. And I know a lot of the music that's trendy right now is like pop, hit, straight to mm-hmm. the point. So you could switch it up. No, absolutely. And I think there's power in that. You know, I don't think that, I think you should be a smart person. And I think yeah. that you should be a smart artist too. Um, you know, and so it's just all about duality, be able to do both, be able to speak on what's going on in the world and be able to have fun when you're ready to have fun, you know? I don't mm-hmm. think there's any one person that goes through life being one dimensional, you know? Okay. The most conscious person ever, I consider myself very conscious. I still have fun, I still go out, I still listen to Sexy Red if I want to, or okay. Young Boy or whoever else, you know? <laughs> it's about duality and, and yeah. being able to tap into different parts of yourself. Yeah, mm-hmm. and a lot of people don't know you're a college graduate. I am, Howard University. Yes, yeah, so how important do you feel like, do you feel like school helped your music? In I actually way? really do, I really do. Yeah. And you know what, for a long time, I may not have answered that question that way. But now in retrospect, I 100% do. Okay. Um, like as, I, so. as I said, well for one, my, my first freestyle video to ever go viral happened at Howard University. Oh wow, really? Yeah, yeah. Nice. And, um, you know, of course, I don't even know if that would have happened if I wasn't at Howard. Howard is a community that, that you know, really yeah, supports and, and pushes 100%. Yeah. So, you know, once 100 classmates shared that, it was easy for it to, mm-hmm. to, you know, pretty much go viral. But yeah. that aside, there are a lot of opportunities awarded to us. And when I say us, you know, I mean youth of color just by going to college that we wouldn't otherwise have access to. Yeah. Um, and so that's super, super important, whether it's networking or just understanding and knowing certain things. Yeah. I've had people try to hold me on so many contracts that they can't because I know what I'm talking about. Mm. Um, and you know, things like that are important. And so even if, you're, even if your reason to go to college is not strictly to learn in academia, mm-hmm. just being in that space and that freedom and the access to opportunity that otherwise might not be in the city, I think is super, super important for us yeah. in particular. College is, is an experience. I feel like you definitely Absolutely. have to go to like see. And that too, I have so many experiences to talk about and so many mm-hmm. different ways that I now think about what I approach in my music mm-hmm. just because of that experience that I had, so. No, definitely. Mm-hmm. Yeah, a lot of people, was it a major like music or was it something else? Not at all. <laughs> guess, guess what my major was, Kobe? Mm. I feel like it's kind of obvious. Oh no. Psychology. <laughs> no, actually, but I love psychology. Damn. But I was a political I, science. That wasn't a close guess? Like, 
Yeah. yeah. No, I was, sociology was one of my minors. I was a political science and philosophy uh, major, economics and sociology minor. So I was all over the social sciences, but, um, but I was always a music person. That's why I, that I think it's another great reason to go to college. Um, you know, I knew how to, how to rap and how to produce without needing my education in that. Um, but of course, that is such a competitive world where people are always like, you know, don't have a number two because then you're not going to make your number one. Yeah. I don't really believe in that. I think mm. you should go absolutely hard with one thing, 100%, but you should always have a means to make it easier to go hard at that one thing. And so, you know, when you have something like your education to fall back on, you know, that also comes with, you know, access to, to more financial opportunities and everything else when it comes to investing in the music. So, you know, these, these things all come together. Okay. Mm -hmm. So you say you believe in going all in on one thing for sure. 100%. So you're currently right now all in on music for all sure. In. All so in. So when did you get all in? Because of course college mm -hmm. took some years. So <laughs> when did you get all in? Even though you was producing from young. Mm -hmm. You know what? I think when things really... By the second viral video, I realized like, okay, now it's happened another time. Mm -hmm. So all right. That's... that's there's obviously a market for what I'm talking about, and obviously there's some sort of audience that wants to hear it. So mm -hmm. after that, I, I hit the ground running. That was 2022. Okay, so a lot mm -hmm. of people, a lot of the kids right now think that they can make something go viral. What do you What do you have to say about that? You know what? I think engineered virality is very fast lived, and you have to be very very careful. When it happens naturally, you know people that's real people gravitating to it, which means they're going to gravitate again. You know, there are certain pieces of mine where regardless of when when I, I post it or where, I know which pieces are going to get certain reactions and have the ability to go viral by themselves. Um, so, yeah, I think that's important. you got to be very, very careful with engineered virality because, like I said, we're in a, a sort of commercial type of space with, with the music industry where it's very easy to just be a one-hit wonder. And, you know, once you have that viral moment, it doesn't, like, there's more that, you know, you got to have what's the next thing, what's coming next. Um, and so what have you done for me lately type of world. So just going viral is not enough, especially when it's so easy to go viral now, you mm -hmm. know? Um, every day somebody's waking up yeah, more viral, viral than they were yesterday, you yeah. know? Whether it's TikTok or Instagram, that's almost inevitable now. So, yeah. yeah. That's definitely a great thing. Be proud of that, but always yeah. take it further and always understand it as a moment to, to grow from, to elevate that virality farther. At the time, that when, when, at the time when you went viral, were you ready? Or did it catch you off guard? You know what? It definitely caught me off guard, but I, I, part of me was prepared. Okay. Part of me was prepared. Actually, the very first time I went viral was the eve of my, my birthday. My sister just randomly posted a, a video on TikTok. I was always kind of oh. anti-TikTok. Oh, I was God, like, so you guys want me to get on there and, like, dance and, like... <laughs> but, TikTok um, is... It has a stigma. I'm you know what? It's lie. grown on me, though. I can't, I can't lie. It's grown on me a little mm -hmm. bit. But, um... But yeah, so she she posted that, and I, I woke up with like 160 thousand followers and like three million views by accident. Um, so you know, in some regard, how do you prepare for that? Yeah, it's like <laughs> but what? yeah, but um, but I'll definitely say I think I was more prepared than I even gave myself credit for at the moment, okay, nice. and I think that definitely was enough to to kind of fuel the 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 interest even more so, you know, once you know that there's really an audience there. Before, music music was always something I really, really wanted to do, and it was a hobby and something I was very serious about. But once you really see that other people are taking you seriously too, then it's like, all right. I'm going to go full force. You have to. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right, so do you have a release date for the project? Right now, it's looking like September 20th. Okay. So you're yeah. stamping that. She said it. I, I can't, I can't keep, I can't, it's over. Can't pull it back it's over. Now. It's can't over. Pull it back it's now. over. Okay. But, um, but yeah, I'm, I'm really excited. I think this is actually the perfect timing, and I'm really glad that I went about it this way. Even though I was going crazy behind the scenes, like, oh my gosh, like this mm -hmm. is taking so long, and I keep telling people this, 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 this. But, um, yeah, I'm, I'm super, super happy with the whole body of work, which is like okay. really, really rare for so me. So all the songs together now. Yeah. Because she said she was promoting the name and she didn't have the songs. So all yeah, the songs I, is together now. There we go. <laughs> We're here now. But um, so yeah, everything's together. 24 records, mix, master, upload, and everything's submitted. So I'm ready. I'm excited. And I'm, I'm really excited for people to see this side of me too. Because like you were saying earlier, Koei, I think that there are a lot of surprises. You know, in terms of some of the feature artists on the project that mm -hmm. people wouldn't expect me to work with, in terms of some of the content, in terms of some of the sounds. So, okay. I'm, I'm excited. All right. I know we definitely have JP. Do you want to give us one more? I want to know, is there a girl on the project? 100%.
Okay. I you know I'm a girls girl. I can't do a whole yeah, project and not, not have a girl women tape. Of um, course. Are they from New York? Yes, ma'am. Oh, okay. Yeah, it's gonna it's gonna get spicy. I'm excited. Okay. Yeah. Um, I want to know who, but uh, you don't gotta say. You'll too see, much. Corey, You'll see. <laughs> you don't have to say too much. <laughs> okay, so also new conscience. Um, I guess. I want to say what was the backstory, but I guess it's kind of like on you. Like it, it's not, it doesn't need much explanation. No, and that's and that's why I wanted to use that name, also <laughs> New Conscious, and start saying it before there was music attached. But um, yeah, I, I think that th this project is very personal to me. In many ways, it's an autobiography, but in a way in which I feel like others can also relate to, which was really really important to me too. Um, I wanted to tell my own story in as complex of a fashion as I could, in a way that which you know other people could also be like, okay, that I get that. I see myself in that scenario and situation, so okay. I think that was that was achieved successfully. Okay, and do you have favorite tracks right now? I do. Um, number three is called Ruler, which is one of my favorites. Um, number six is called uh, Soldier's Heart, which is one of my favorites. That's like a little Afrobeat hip hop vibe. Afrobeat. Oh yeah, it's getting. Okay. I I gotta show you some things when this might go out, Chloe. <laughs> but. Okay. Um, I, I, I like a, a lot of the records on there, which, like, for me to say that, and I'm a perfectionist, like, mm -hmm. it really means a lot that I'm saying I like my own music okay, on the project. Okay. So, yeah, I, I pretty much like every record on there, and that's why I got it on there. So when picking the songs, who do you, I guess, go to for, like, advice or, I don't want to say approval, but, like, who do you want to get, who do you want to have a, a second listen? You know what? I'm, like, very, very big on everything being in my head. I feel like the moment someone else gives me their opinion, it's automatically um, shifting my own perception of whatever mm. I thought. So like when I'm in a creative zone, I really don't even like to listen to, to other music. I don't wanna get distracted. I just wanna be fully immersed in my own mm. mind. Okay. But you know, after that process is done though, of course I do like to, I, I like to make sure I'm not embarrassing myself, even though I got a whole lot of faith in myself. Yeah. But um, you know, I'm real close to my cousins and my sister. And- um, So family. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. I, I love, that's I love nice. It. That's nice to hear. Yeah. Okay, so September twentieth, we got a couple people on the project. Yes, um, indeed. Let's get some, I guess, motivation behind the project. Oh man, I felt like a lot of people aren't rapping right right now. I had to, aren't I had to, right I had to now. come in. I had to come <laughs> in and and say what I had to say real quick. Okay. Yeah, but um, um but no, nah, in general, just inspiration. I think just being a student of life and just experience in life really is a life project you know it's like there's some things to dance to on there because you can dance sometimes in life you know there are th some things that you can probably cry to smile to you know, do whatever and that that's really the way i intended it so okay mm -hmm. and if someone's never heard your music what song should they listen to on the project first definitely listen to number nine called black messiah okay so if they never heard Rand simone definitely number nine yes ma'am all right september 20th <laughs> is there any last words um, you know what, I'm just super excited for people to, to hear this music that I've been working on for, for so long and um, really making sure it was, was exactly how I wanted it to be. So now's the time. I'm ready to throw it out there. I'm ready to, to hear what everyone has to say. And, and that's it. So thank you for everyone who's supported thus far. And um, there's a whole lot more to come. So if you're still here, I promise it's going to be worth it. There's about to be even more incentive. Watch this. And uh, thank you for having me too, Corey. Of course. I appreciate it. Yeah, <laughs> September 20th. So tell people where to find you. How can they tune in? Absolutely. You can find me everywhere. Raina Simone, Spotify, Apple Music, um, SoundCloud, YouTube, all, all the streaming platforms, Raina Simone. And then my socials all right now are at RSH on the beat. That, so that's an interesting story, Corey. Yeah, so RSH on the beat was originally just my producer name because I was obsessed with, with Mustard on the beat when I was little. Yeah. So <laughs> as soon as I heard Mustard on the beat, oh, I was like, well, I'm RSH on the beat now. But... Um, <laughs> But with that being said, so yeah, you can find me everywhere at RSH on the beat on all socials. Um, I'm trying to make it such that it's at Raina Simone everywhere on all socials very soon. Yeah, I'm about to say that's gonna be a little confusing. Yeah, they they trying to get me. They they're not letting me have the so Raina Simone. So how name. many of your songs you produced on your project or all of them? Um, the vast majority, definitely over half. Um, anything yeah. that I that I didn't produce is definitely co-produced. Okay, nice. Mm -hmm. all right. For sure. So RS on the beat. RSH on the beat, Raina Simone on all platforms.